Welcome to module 3 on two dimensional motion and vectors. So, in this module, we'll discuss the vectors, what are vectors, and what are scalars. Second, we'll talk about vector operations similar to algebra. We have vectors have similar algebra, so that algebra. And then we'll get into two dimensional motion, talking about projectile motion and relative motion. So, let's start with vectors. So in this section, we're going to try to understand the distinguish between the scalar and a vector, how to add and subtract vectors by using the graphical method. Finally, how to multiply and divide vectors by using scalars. So let's start with a scalar and a vector. So what is a scalar? A scalar is a physical quantity that only has magnitude but no direction. So an example of a scalar is speed, volume, for example, the number of pages in your textbook can also be considered as a scalar next is a vector so a vector is a physical quantity that has both direction and magnitude so an example of this is displacement velocity acceleration all of these quantities are examples of vectors there are many others we are going to discuss as we move along the lectures so in this book we are going to write the scalar quantities in italics and the vectors are represented by boldface symbols so let's start with the graphical addition of vectors how do you add vectors graphically so graphically when adding vectors we are going to use what we call the triangle law of vectors so what does the triangle law basically say so the triangle law basically says that if two sides of a triangle represent the two vectors then the third closing side represents the resultant so for example, let's consider that you have two vectors. So this is one vector that you have, and this is the second vector that you have. So let's consider that this vector, the first vector is A bar, and the second vector is B bar. So notice that in this, the directionality is going this way. Notice that all of these vectors are in the same direction now the resultant so the resultant here represents the addition addition quantity so resultant here is this addition a bar plus b bar so because we are talking about vectors vectors have both direction as well as magnitude so considering the resultant the resultant should also have a direction and magnitude so that value here becomes the closing side the opposite and the closing side so this becomes the closing side and this is the resultant vector a bar plus b bar we write it as r bar so r bar representing the resultant so r bar here is a bar plus b bar so this is how we write the addition of vectors graphically so what does triangle law basically say if the two sides of a triangle are represented by two vectors the opposite and the closing side represents the resultant of these two vectors or the addition of these two vectors so this here represents the triangle law we can expand this to another type of law what we call the uh, polygon law of vectors so what does polygon law basically say is that for example let's say we have a multiple vectors so let's say this is one vector two three 4, 5, and 6. So let's say we have this vector here. So this vector is A bar, we have B bar, C bar, D bar, E bar, and F bar. Then the closing side is the one that starts with the uh, starting the end point of the first vector to the starting point of the last vector. So the tail end of the first vector to the head end of the head, the arrow head of the last vector. So the connecting point here, this vector represents R bar. And this R bar here represents A bar plus B bar plus C bar plus D bar plus E bar plus F bar. So this is the idea behind the polygon law of vectors. So this is the idea behind the polygon law of vectors. Mm -hmm. 
So this represents the polygon law of vectors. So the polygon law basically says that if all of these vectors are going in the same direction, then the resultant vector is the one that closes the direction with the final vector. So that final vector becomes R bar. So this is addition of vectors. Now, so remember the properties. So these are the properties. First, vectors can be added in any order. So depending on uh, the type that you have, vectors can be added in any order. To subtract a vector, we are going to add its opposite vector. So let's take an example of that. Let's say, for example, I have a vector A bar. And I have another vector B bar. So let's consider that this vector is A bar and this vector is B bar. How would you write, how would you find the resultant A bar minus B bar? So one intelligent way of writing A bar minus B bar is to write A bar plus of negative B bar. What is negative B bar? Negative B bar is the negative of the B bar vector. So how would you write the negative? So the negative here represents the direction, not the magnitude. So magnitude stays the same, but the direction will change. So this vector represents minus B bar. So this vector represents minus B bar. So now, how would you write A bar minus B bar here? Notice that the vectors can be added in any order. So notice that the direction is going in this direction. So the closing side will be the one that adds up to both the vectors. So A bar plus of minus B bar will be this vector. So this vector is going to be a bar plus of minus b bar so this becomes a bar minus b bar so which is the subtraction subtraction of both vectors so remember that even in subtraction we're basically adding the vectors but we are subtracting we are taking the negative of the second vector and adding it to the first vector so that is how we generally determine the value here Next, let's talk about multiplying vectors. Multiplication of a vector basically increases the magnitude. For example, let's say if a single vector is five units, right, in this direction, then multiplying a scalar to this vector basically increases, for example, let's say I'm adding a scalar, multiplying a scalar to, then we are increasing its magnitude to 10 units provided the direction will not change. So the only thing that is changing is the magnitude, but not the direction. The same thing happens in division. When you divide a vector, we are changing its magnitude, not its direction. So we are multi dividing with a scalar or multiplying with a scalar. We only manipulate the magnitude, but not the direction. So this is the idea behind addition and subtraction of vectors graphically. So let's go into section two. So in this section, we'll talk about vector operations so in this section first we'll try to identify first we'll try to identify the appro appropriate coordinate systems for solving problems with vectors so basically saying that how do we take vectors and solve them algebraically and then finally apply the path pythagorean theorem pythagorean theorem and tangent function to the calculation of magnitude and direction of a resultant vector Third, we'll try to resolve vectors into components using the sine and cosine functions. And finally, how we'll try to add vectors that are not perpendicular. So let's start with the coordinate system. So the most common coordinate system that we employ is the XY axis coordinate system, more commonly known as the Cartesian coordinate system. Now these axes are often designated using fixed directions. So one is the horizontal, the other is the vertical. So you have a horizontal one and you have the vertical one, vertical axis. So in this figure, we have a positive y-axis and a positive x-axis and the airplane here is traveling at a 45 degree angle to the x-axis. So with respect to the x-axis, it's traveling at an angle of 45 degrees with a velocity of 300 kilometers, 300 meters per second. So it's traveling. So remember that when you take this direction, so this direction is east and this direction is north. So this is somewhere in the northeast. So this is how we can determine the direction as well. So in section one, we talked about the magnitude and direction that we found graphically, but we'll try to approach this in terms of algebra. So with this approach of graphical approach, the accuracy depends on how careful the diagram is drawn and measured. 
So the simpler method is to use the Pythagorean theorem and the tangent function. So how would you use the Pythagorean theorem? So let's discuss the Pythagorean theorem itself. Pythagorean theorem basically states that if two sides at a right angle with each other, so if there are two sides with a right angle with each other, then the hypotenuse square is the sum of the squares of the individual sides. So C square is equal to A square plus B square provided A and B have an angle of 90 degrees between them. Next, let's talk about the tangent angle and tangent of an angle is the opposite side by the adjacent side. So the tan of the angle theta is the opposite side by the adjacent side. So let's try and solve a problem so that this becomes easier. So let's start with a problem here. So an archaeologist climbs the Great Pyramid in Giza, Egypt. The pyramid height is 136 meters and its width is 2.3 times 10 square meter. So what is the magnitude and direction of the displacement of the archaeologist after she had climbed from the bottom of the pyramid to the top? So let's try and first try to visualize a diagram here. So first we are talking about a pyramid. So a pyramid in simple sense can be considered as a triangular shape. So the triangular shape here So in this triangular shape here, so they have given us the height and the width. So this height here and they have given us the width. So the height is 136 meters and the width is 2.30 times 10 square, so which is about 230 meters. Now notice that pyramids are symmetrical, so which basically means that if you draw a line perpendicular here. So this angle becomes 90 degrees. So it splits 230 meters into two equal halves. So 230 by two becomes 115 meter. Here and 115 meter here. Now the displacement of the archeologist starts from at this point here and ends at this point here. So which means this is the path that is taken by the archeologist. So this is the path taken by the archaeologist. So first thing we have to know here is the we need both the magnitude and direction of the displacement. So let's start with any one single path. So let's start with this part of the triangle only. So we we'll try to take only this part of the triangle and write it separately. So this is 115 meters and this is 136 meters and there is a right angle triangle here. Now, to find the displacement here, sorry, this is, this distance is 136 meters. Now we do not know the hypotenuse distance, so we know that this is the hypotenuse C square C. So C square equals A square plus B square. So this is A square A here and this is B here. So A here is 115 square plus 136 square. And so now use a calculator and try to determine this particular value. So let me write down the values for you. So when you calculate that CC becomes under root 115 square plus 136 square. So that value when calculated, you will get 178 meters. So this distance of displacement here, so let's consider this displacement. So this displacement, it is 178 meters. So now we have found the magnitude. So this represents the magnitude. Now we also need to know the direction. So direction always is represented by the angle. So this is the angle that we need theta. So we know from the tangent of the angle, tan theta is opposite side by the adjacent side. So opposite side is 136 meters by 115 meters. So meter, meter gone. So tan theta equals 136 by 115. So theta becomes tan inverse of 136 by 115. So you can use the function tan inverse on your calculators. You can see it above tan. Generally, you would press shift and press tan. So you would get tan inverse of 136 by 115. So when you calculate it, the angle becomes 49.8 degrees. 
So for this, make sure that your calculator is set in the degrees rather than in radians. So if you are set in radians, you might get a different answer. So make sure that make sure to check the calculator and see if the correct uh, angle is set or not. So now the angle and the displacement, both magnitude and the direction are found. So this is how you can calculate both the magnitude and direction. To calculate the magnitude, use simply the Pythagorean theorem. And to calculate the direction, use the tangent of the angle. So tan theta is always the opposite side by the adjacent side. So adjacent one is the one that touches the angle. Opposite one is the one that is opposite to the angle. So this is how you can calculate the direction. So pause the video right here. I use the same principles and try to solve these problems. Next, let's go into the next topic is how to resolve vectors. So what is resolving vectors basically mean? So what you can do here, if you consider a vector under an x and a y axis. So let's consider we have a vector here. So let's consider that I have a vector here. Let's consider this, this vector as a bar. Now, what are the, so what is the resolution of vectors? So resolution of vectors basically determines the x component of the vector and the y component of the vector. So what is the x component of the vector basically? So when you look at it graphically, the shadow of the a vector on the x axis represents the a x component of the vector. So the x component of the vector a. The shadow of the vector on the y axis represents the y component of the vector. So a x and a y. So the idea here is to make sure that we can write a bar as a x bar plus a y bar. So the idea here is that any vector can be written in the form a bar equals a x bar plus a y bar. So we are basically splitting the vector into two, two components based on the axis. Why do we need to do this is because if you have two vectors at right angles with each other, then the answer can be found easily. But provided if you don't have vectors at an angle, but when you have both vectors at two different angles, then you might have to resolve each vector into its individual components and then add the components separately. So that makes it easier to standardize the uh, solution of the problem. So this is the reason why we resolve vectors. So before we resolve vectors, let's look at two main important parts. So one is to look at the right angle triangle itself. So let's take a look at the right angle triangle and talk about the trigonometric ratios. So we already discussed the components of a right angle triangle. You have a 90 degree angle. So let's consider this angle as theta. If that angle is theta, so this angle, this side is the opposite side. This is the adjacent side. And this is the hypotenuse. So we are going to use two main important angles, sine of theta and cosine of theta. So we call them sine theta and cos theta. So these are basically trigonometric ratios that can be used to determine different values. So sine of theta is written as opposite side by the hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is written as adjacent side by the hypotenuse. So you have opposite side by the hypotenuse and adjacent side by the hypotenuse. So how would you resolve vectors now? Let's consider a vector here. So let's consider the vector here. So this is the vector a bar. So if that vector, so this is ax and this becomes ay. Let's look at the two vectors here. Notice the, the way in which the triangle law works here. So ax plus ay becomes the resultant. So a bar becomes ax bar plus ay bar. But to find ax and ay, notice that the angle between ax and ay bar is 90 degrees. So write this, uh, this, this particular one right here. So this represents ay bar, this represents ax bar, and this represents a bar. So these are the vectors right here. Now sine theta can be written as opposite side. So opposite side is ay by 
the adjacent side of the arco hypotenuse is a cos theta can be written as ax adjacent side by the hypotenuse a now from this ay can be written as a sin theta from this ax can be written as a cos theta now let's take a look at in simple sense if you look at uh, a triangle where so if you look at the adjacent sides here so ay represents a sin theta so this is the angle if this is the angle theta then ay becomes a sin theta ax can be written as a cos theta so this version of writing ax as a sin theta and ay as a sorry ax as a cos theta and ay as a sin theta these are called the components of a vector so these are called the components of a vector so this process is called resolution of vectors let's take an example and let's try to see if we can uh, determine the answers so we have so they're asking us to find the components of, a, of the velocity of a helicopter traveling at 95 kilometers per hour at an angle of 35 degrees to the ground. Now, so let's draw first try to draw a diagram. So first we have the x-axis, uh, y-axis and the x-axis. So on the y-axis and x-axis. So let's take a look at the helicopter here. So the helicopter is traveling at 95 kilometers per hour. So this is the vector that shows the velocity vector of, so this is the velocity vector of the helicopter. So the velocity here, so the magnitude V here, so the magnitude V here is 95 kilometers per hour and this angle here is 35 degrees. So how would you find the X and Y components here? So this is the Y component of the vector, this is the X component of the vector. So we know that Vx is V cos theta and Vay is V sin theta. Now, so we know that we they have given already that V is 95 kilometers per hour. So Vx becomes V cos theta. So V here is 95 cos theta here is 35 degrees so use your calculator and calculate cos 35 degrees so that value 95 cos 35 degrees gives you 78 kilometers per hour and vy is v sin theta which is 95 sin 35 degrees which becomes 54 kilometers per hour so these are the components vx and vy so vx is 78 kilometers per hour and vy is 54 kilometers per hour so these are the two vectors two components of the vectors that we have so you can just round off and you can use the uh, pythagorean theorem and uh, determine whether this angle these answers are correct or not so the idea here is that v square should always be equal to vx square plus vy square so this is the main idea behind the problem here and how to find the components of vectors so use the same principle here, pause the video right here and try to solve this problem. Next let's talk about how to add vectors that are not perpendicular. So let's try to determine each of these, so let's use a problem to determine this principle here, so to uh, represent this principle. So what is given here? So you have a hiker that walks 27 kilometers from her base camp at 35 degrees south of east. The next day she walks 41 kilometers in the direction 65 degrees north of east and discovers a forest ranger's tower. Find the magnitude and direction of her resultant displacement. So first always try to draw the x and y axis first. So we have the x axis and the y axis done. Now, she is traveling first in the south of east direction. So remember that south is downward 
and east is forward. So she is traveling in this direction. How much distance? She travels 27 kilometers at 35 degrees. So she travels this direction for 27 kilometers at an angle of 35 degrees south of east. Next, she travels north of east at a direction of 65 degrees. So at a direction of 65 degrees, next at this direction from here, she travels north of east. Right? Now, notice that here, this angle here is 35 degrees and this angle here is 65 degrees. So with the horizontal, the angle is 65 degrees. Now we have both angles here. Next, the third angle. So what is the displacement here? Notice these are the two vectors. So this is 27 kilometers and this is 41 kilometers. So to find the displacement, we have to find the initial and the final position. So this is the initial and final position. So combine the initial and final position. That gives you your answer for your final displacement. So this is the displacement. So this is the displacement D for the final values. Now, how would you find the actual vectors here? So you have the two angles here. First thing is that they have given us theta with this angle here and this angle here. And now we have to find this angle theta. And we also have to find the magnitude of this vector d here. So first thing to do is always to remember that whenever you have vectors at two different angles, split them into their components. So let's take a simple example of this. Let's say I have a vector d1 in this direction here. Let's consider that I have a vector d1 bar in this direction here. And let's say I have another vector d2 bar in this direction here. So let's consider that this is d1 bar and this is d2 bar. So we know that the final displacement is the one that joins the first point and the last point. So this is the displacement d. So we know that this, this is the displacement d here. Now how would you find d directly? We cannot find d directly here because these are not at right angles. So what we would do first is to rather before writing the d here, we are going to split d1 into its individual components. First, we are going to split d1 into its x component. So d1's x component will become, let's consider this is the component of the d1 vector. And this is the x component of the d2 vector. Next, we have d y component of the d1 vector and the y component of the d2 vector. So this becomes, let's call this uh, delta x1 and this as delta y1. Let's call this delta x2 and delta y2. So to find delta x here, that becomes delta x1 plus delta x2 and delta y here becomes delta y1 plus delta y2. Next, how would you find d here? d becomes delta x square plus delta y square. This is your final answer for the entire, for the final answer for the displacement d here. So this displacement d can be found using the total sum of the y component and the total sum of the x component and using the Pythagorean theorem finally to find your answers. So this is how we solve problems when you have when you have things at two different angles. Now let's find first find each of these components here. First let's take up the 27 kilometer vector at 35 degree angle and let's try to find its components first. So you can draw them separately. You don't need to draw them in one single space. You can draw both the vectors in two separate parts. So let's consider this, this is the first vector here. So this first vector is at 27 kilometers at an angle of 
third fighting piece. Notice that its X component is this one and its Y component will be downward. So this one becomes, so if this is 27 and this is 35 degrees, so we know that X component is, so this is delta X1 and this is delta Y1. So we know that delta X1 is D1 cos theta 1 and delta Y1 is D1 sin theta 1. So let's consider this distance as D1. So D1 cos theta 1 becomes 27 cos 35 degrees and 27 sin 35 degrees. So because delta y1 is in the reverse direction, let's put a negative in front of it, just in case. So now we have negative 27 sine 35 degrees. Now, so 27 cos 35 degrees and 27 sine 35 degrees. So that gives you a value of, so delta x1 becomes 22 kilometers and delta y1 becomes negative 15 kilometers remember that anything upward is positive anything downward is negative anything to the right is positive anything to the left is negative now we have to find delta x2 and delta y2 so again delta x2 becomes d2 cos theta 2 delta y2 becomes d2 sin theta 2 so D2 here, we have already determined that D2 is 41 degrees, 41 kilometers and the angle is 65 degrees. So D2 cos theta 2 becomes, so notice that when you draw this vectors uh, x, x, x and y components, so both are in the forward direction. So this is the x component and this is the y component. So we can write it directly here. So there's no negativity here. So D2 here is 41 cos 65 degrees and 41 sine 65 degrees. So when you calculate it, so delta X2 becomes 17 kilometers and delta Y2 becomes 37 kilometers. Now we need the total value of delta X and total value of delta Y. So delta X total becomes delta X1 plus delta X2. So delta X1 value here is 22 kilometers, delta X2 is 17. So 22 plus 17, that value becomes 39 kilometers. And the delta Y total, again, is delta Y1 plus delta Y2. So delta Y1 becomes negative 15 plus 37. So negative 15 plus 37 becomes 22 kilometers. So this is delta x total and delta y total. How would you find the displacement now? So we need this vector d here. So that displacement d, d square can be written as delta x total square plus delta y total square. Delta x total is 39 square plus 22 square. So use your calculator. Now, so d becomes square root of 39 square plus 22 square. That equals a total of 45 kilometers. So the displacement in total is 45 kilometers. Notice that we haven't did, we haven't ended the problem yet. How would you find the next one we need is the angle theta. So this angle theta for the final value, so tan theta is always opposite by adjacent. Opposite here is delta y total by delta x total. So that value is 22 by 39. So that becomes, so theta becomes tan inverse of 22 by 39. So that becomes a 29 degrees theta. Now which angle is the displacement, the final resultant here? The final resultant is this is north and this is east. So it's in the northeast direction. So 29 degrees northeast. So this is how you can find the magnitude and the direction. So this is how you can find your answer. So this is how you can solve the problem when you have things at two different angles. 
So use the same principle now. Pause the video right here and try to So try to pause the video right here and try to solve using the same principles that we did just now. Try to pause the video right here and try to solve this problem. 